in our day-to-day -day lives. Someone you may not have noticed is waiting, longing for healing, for justice, for hope. You only mean to be passing by, but they, they see you. And even if they don't know they are asking, they are wondering, are you the one? Not necessarily the Messiah, but perhaps one to bring hope, to be a light in the darkness. They may be someone in some kind of prison, looking for some kind of encouragement, someone longing for healing or appreciation or forgiveness. Will you be the one or should they wait for another? Will you be the one to shine light in their darkness? Or are they to wait for another? Perhaps in our day-to-day -day lives, we should pause and be still in the grace of God. Allow the light that is preparing to be born in the world to be born in you. Let the light grow and radiate Bear it with you through the day, because eventually you will meet someone who seeks grace, who longs for a sign of hope. And for them, you, you will be the one. Amen. Good morning, Stone Village, and happy Sunday. I hope that all of you are well and safe in this world. All is well in my world. The Lord be with you, and let us pray. Author of our lives, we praise you for writing us into your narrative. As characters in this chapter of your story of creation, help us to tell the truth of your steadfast love and mercy to all who have ears to hear. Send your spirit to this place and these people to bless our understanding of your word, so that it may be a lamp upon our feet and a light unto our path. In the name of the Christ child, we pray. Amen. The reading today is from Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him in all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> o 
according to John, the wrath of God is coming. It doesn't matter who you are. The axe is out and ready. The chopping is about to begin. Every tree that does not produce good fruit is being cut down and burned. The unquenchable fire is raging, waiting to be fed the chaff. And that's just the beginning. He said, a greater one is coming, one more powerful than himself is on the way. After listening to John, it's tempting to look at the two lit Advent candles and view the season of Advent as merely the countdown to Christmas and leave this wild man behind. We know Christmas came last year. It will come again this year, just like it has for almost 2,000 years. So maybe we can dismiss John's message as allegory, metaphor, or symbolism. Maybe it's the rambling of a guy who spent too much time by himself in the wilderness eating locust. Or maybe we hear the message and think about all those other people to whom it applies. You know, someone other than us. But we can't do that. The Viper Sermon of John's is gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. However, for most of us, threats, anger, and judgment are not good news. And honestly, we would rather hear and think about sweet baby Jesus. But John's not preaching a Christmas sermon. John doesn't mention a beautiful night with a bright shining star to guide us. There are no humble and gentle shepherds guiding their flocks by night. No angels from the realms of glory or faithful virgins. No, for John, this is Advent, the season when wrath, axes, and unquenchable fire are talked about as good news. In today's gospel, John is looking for God to do something drastic right now, and his message is repent, turn, or burn. <laughs> his refrain is wrath, axes, fire. Wrath, axes, fire. God's coming and God's going to get you. <laughs> I suspect part of our discomfort with John and his name calling, his preaching of wrath, axes, and fire is, or at least it should be, is that at some level we know he is right. When we look around our world, or examine our own lives, we are confronted with the reality, the truth of John's sermon. Our world and our lives are not as they should be, as they can be, as God intends them to be. We could each name the broken places of our lives and world, anger, violence, greed, poverty, homelessness, wars, marginalization. However, there's only one fault, one sin, worse than evil itself, and that is indifference to evil. Indifference is more insidious than evil itself more universal, more contagious, and more dangerous. Often, we live such fast-paced lives, exhausted lives, that we have become indifferent to what is happening in the world, indifferent to the needs of another human being. Further, maybe our worldview, even our church view, is so small that if something does not directly affect our lives or those we love, 
then it is of no consequence to us. And sometimes the pain and fear in our lives causes us to be indifferent to those relationships in need of acceptance, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Or maybe you have become indifferent to yourself and can no longer see the original beauty with which God created you. Perhaps indifference has convinced you your life is meaningless. Indifference comes in many different forms, often, often disguising itself as freedom or independence. John's cry for repentance is the call to turn away from our indifference, to engage at a life-changing level the coming kingdom. In the way of the kingdom, requires we reorder, recalibrate our lives, relationships, and priorities. John's words are words of interrogation. Do we care enough to change our lives and the world in which we live? Do we love enough to get angry about the suffering and the plight of other human beings, even if we have never met them. Do you care enough? Do you love enough? Do you know who does care enough? Who does love enough? God. And that's why divine wrath, axes, and fire are good news. God loves enough to get angry. The good news is our God is not indifferent. God is not indifferent to creation. God is not indifferent to the evil and suffering of this world. God is not indifferent to God's people. God is not indifferent to your life or to my life, ever. God's concern and love for creation are the source of God's anger. In God's anger, is the rejection of indifference. God is paying attention to and, in, and is present in this world, in our lives. And God's anger is not offered as punishment, but as an encouragement to change, to turn our lives around. Of course, that can be frightening and even painful However, there is an agony even more excruciating awaiting us, and that is, that is being forsaken, discarded, rejected, and abandoned. It is the agony of being the object of indifference. And how many of us here have been such an object due to our gender, our sexuality, our skin color, our beliefs. Most of you know what it's like to be an object of indifference. Understand, God's anger is never the goal, nor is the goal of divine anger punishment or retribution. Divine anger is the means, the instrument, to achieving the goal, and the goal is always love and relationship. Divine anger recognizes and celebrates the existence, the sacredness, and the value of every human life. Divine wrath is God's expression of longing for us. It is God saying to you and to me, you are worthy of my time and attention. I care and love you enough to get angry when you settle for less than I am giving you. When you accept being less than you were created to be. Wrath, axes, and fire is God's call to us to turn away from, to repent of our indifference. And so, my friends, how does indifference rule your life today? 
How have you become indifferent to self, to others, even to God? In what ways has indifference denied you life in the kingdom? Wrath, axes, and fire are not about destruction or harm or punishment. They are about life, love, and relationship. The unquenchable fire of God's love burns away our indifference. The healing acts of God's love cuts away our indifference. And the wrath of God's love reminds us God cares and we, we matter. To name the places and ways of our indifference is the beginning of repentance, the beginning of new life being born in you and in me. Thanks be to God. Amen. I give thanks to God for each of you, and I pray this day you bear witness to the love of God in this world. Bear witness to the love of God so those to whom love is a stranger, they will find in you a generous and loving friend. In the name of Christ Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. I love you, stoners. Josiah loves you. I hope you have a wonderful day if I don't see you in worship, and um, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.